about a year ago I posted something on Facebook asking people to contact their senators and I got one comment from my grandparents. They told me that they would love to contact their own senator but you see they can't because they don't have one because they live in Washington DC which is not a state and not technically represented in our representative democracy. Almost 700,000 people live in the District of Columbia, our nation's capital, but the people who live there lack the representation given to the rest of the country. Citizens of Washington DC don't have senators. They have a representative in the House who is not allowed to vote on the House floor, and they've only been able to vote for president since 1961. The license plates in Washington DC have the slogan, taxation without representation, and that is accurate. The United States decided to become its own country when we were subject to laws and taxes that we did not have a voice in creating. But we do that to the people who live in DC. We do the exact thing that made us want to make our own separate country. And like a lot of things that don't make sense in the United States, this is a problem that was built by a handful of white guys in the late 18th century. In 1783, there was a mutiny in Pennsylvania. Soldiers from the American Revolution approached Congress and said, hey, could we get paid for all that work that we did in the war, you know, since we won the war and didn't get paid while we were fighting it? Uh, Congress ignored these soldiers and a few days later the soldiers marched on Congress, which at the time was meeting in Philadelphia, and then hundreds of soldiers surrounded the place where Congress was meeting and refused to let them leave until someone talked to them and paid them. This is when everyone in American politics learned not to ignore the requests of veterans because that is a political move that does not end well in our country. The soldiers eventually allowed the members of Congress to leave and then the members of Congress met somewhere else and tried to figure out where they could meet permanently and where the capital of this new country should be. And then in 1790, they passed the Residence Act, establishing a home on land ceded by both Virginia and Maryland, a federal land protected by federal security. If you want to learn more about the Residence Act, you can learn all about it on the Library of Congress's website. And may I suggest that while you're doing that, you listen to the tangentially related song from Hamilton, The Room Where It Happens. It doesn't offer much in the way of background information, but it sounds phenomenal. So the actions of these men from over 200 years ago created a problem that we are still dealing with today. There are people living in the United States who are being disenfranchised and who are living without the full rights of citizenship because of where they happen to live and that's not right. And if we're being honest, this isn't a problem that only happens in DC. This also happens in U.S. territory, although I will continue to only discuss Washington, D.C. in this video. Washington, D.C. has a larger population than Wyoming and Virginia, but they have to have every law they pass for their citizens approved by Congress. As of 2017, Washington, D.C. has a larger GDP than Arkansas, Nebraska, Mississippi, New Mexico, Hawaii, New Hampshire, West Virginia, Delaware, Idaho, Maine, Rhode Island, North Dakota, Alaska, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, and Vermont. But the budget that they pass needs to be approved by the federal government before they can implement it for their constituents in the District of Columbia. Washington, D.C. is home to key institutions of all three branches of government but aren't fully represented in them. Over the years, there have been several bills to grant DC statehood. The last one was introduced in March of 2017 with 18 co-sponsors in the Senate, which is kind of amazing because DC has no representative in the Senate. And on a surface level, this isn't an issue that directly impacts most Americans because most Americans live in a state and have full representation in their federal government. But we should strive to ensure that every American has full rights, has full representation, and has the full ability to determine their future and the future of our country. It is the most American thing to fight for representation and for the rights of our neighbors. If you would like to help, you can contact your representatives about granting Washington, D.C. statehood. You can talk to people who live in the District of Columbia about what they think, and maybe every so often just let your friends know of the fact that the people living in Washington, D.C. don't have full representation in our country despite being the capital and therefore do not have the full rights of citizenship. And that's not right. 
that's not right. And hey, if you want to see more from me, you can subscribe, watch another video of mine, or support me on Patreon. And hey, I love you.